What is up, viewer out there watching this Vilarox back here, bringing you this time another installment of Why I Want. This time, we're taking a look at a prospect who, more or less, most likely will be there? I don't know when the Canucks are drafting, probably in the 6 to 9 range, depending on where we finish in the lottery. If we don't win any of the lotteries, this is what this series is for, because I'm going to be talking about guys that I would like to have if we drafted in the late 10s range. So, the prospect that I wanted to talk about today is the first player to ever have been granted exceptional status into the QMJHL, Joseph Valeno. And a lot of people who are watching this video are like, what the hell, Why are you, you did a video about Bokefist and Hughes, why are you making a video about Valeno now? What the hell, you want this guy? And I'm gonna say, yeah, I would really, really be happy with getting Joe Valeno. And of course, this is not because I think that he will be better than any of the other players here. It's not because I think that he's the most talented player out of this draft, but the thing is, what you gotta realize about Joe Valeno is, he's the most capable. I'm not saying the most skilled out of this draft. I'm saying that besides probably Rasmus Dahlin, Joe Valeno is the most capable of maintaining a solid NHL role. Right off the bat though, I'd like to say still, this is not a prospect analysis video, this is not a deep dive into their analytical stats and whatnot to prove who's best or not, this is just a talking. If you want to go really in-depth with these prospects, again, check out the guys like Maroki and NHL Draft Central. NHL Draft Central in particular has a fantastic video on Joe Valeno that talks about why he's still going to be a good prospect. And let's talk a little bit about that here. So, I said a little bit earlier that Joe Valeno is one of the most capable prospects in this draft. And if you looked at the draft rankings, that really wouldn't come across that way, because if you look at Joe Valeno, some scouts have him in the 9, 10, 11 range, that seems to be where he is usually projected, but some other scouts, they have him as high as 4th? Other scouts have him as low as 23rd? It's really just a crapshoot that Joe Valeno is going to go in the top 10 at all, because so many guys have him outside the top 10, outside the top 20, some guys have him in the top five. It's incredible just the diversity between where people believe he's going to go. And this is definitely tainted by the fact that he was granted exceptional status. Let's be real here. But the thing is, this is a point that NHL Draft Central made. I want to make it here on this video as well. Joe Valeno was granted exceptional status not because he's supposed to be the next Tavares, the next Ekblad, the next McDavid. He's not supposed to be one of those guys. He was granted exceptional status because he was ready to play at the QMJHL level. And he was literally a year ahead in his physical development in terms of being able to be that guy who steps into the lineup right away. Which is why he was able to make the St. John Sea Dogs in the first year. Granted, he played bottom six minutes, but he was still an underager. And the fact is, he was able to maintain a spot on that roster. Him being granted exceptional status doesn't mean that he's going to be the next generational player, it just means that he's ready for the next step. And this is probably one of the best parts of his overall game. Because Joe Valeno, described by many scouts, he's a guy who will step into the lineup immediately. He's got that body, he's got that maturity, he's got that competence to be able to step into the lineup right away. And the fact is, when it comes to Joe Valeno, you're looking at a player who definitely is going to have an NHL career. There are no buts, there are no maybes with Joe Valeno. He will have a solid NHL career, because the way his progression has gone throughout the past five years of hockey development, he's looking all the way up to being an NHL player for the rest of his career. There are no risks with taking Joe Valeno, and he has been described as the safest pick in this draft other than Rosmus Dahlin. The only thing is, people don't really know where the ceiling is. You can guess that the ceiling is going to be like a Taves level player, because he's described as a two-way playmaking player who doesn't really score that many goals, but has great vision and fantastic puck control while skating around. And his back check is incredible, penalty killing incredible, he is the all-round two-way player that any team would like to have. 
And considering that Taves has been one of the better two-way players in the game, it's not surprising to see why people are saying Joe Valeno's ceiling is going to be Taves. Again, that doesn't mean he's going to be Taves, it just means that his ceiling is at the Taves level. So, the thing is, a lot of people don't really think highly of Valeno because they don't see the generational scoring talent that is Connor McDavid or Tavares in Joe Valeno's game. And that's completely fine. Because, obviously, if Joe Valeno wasn't granted exceptional status, I have a feeling that his draft stock would be fairly more contained into a certain region across all of the scouts, and not all over the place like a whole bunch of scouts have him. And, of course, taking Valeno in the draft with whatever pick the Vancouver Canucks got, it would be a secure pick, and a pick that we would know would succeed in the NHL level. The only thing is, teams don't want to be that team that takes a guy like Valeno, who has a good NHL career, but then, like, a Quinn Hughes, who's taken immediately after, goes on to become the next Bobby Orr. They don't want that to happen there. But at the same time, best player available, of course, but it really depends on who you think is the best player available, and what you value in a so-called best player. Are you looking for the player who has the highest ceiling, or who has the highest likelihood of reaching their ceiling, or who has the highest likelihood of becoming a solid NHLer? Because if you're looking for the best NHLer, it's, pro it's Rasmus Dahlin, of course, but if you're looking for the most guaranteed NHLer, it's Joe Valeno. Valeno demonstrates everything that a two-way leader demonstrates on and off the ice. He got traded to Drummondville earlier this season, and over there he finished things up with 48 points in 33 games played, 16 goals, 32 assists. His playmaking ability is in the top class of this year's draft. It's not even just his passing or his dangles or whatever. His vision is the best thing about his game. His vision and his awareness. Being able to know where other players are on the ice, where his own teammates are out there on the ice, he uses his powerful skating and his quick intelligence to look around, identify the situation, and be able to make the best passes going forward. The same thing happens in the defensive end, as his defensive awareness is off the charts. Joe Valeno was granted exceptional status because his play, his awareness, his development with his mind in terms of playing hockey, it was already that far ahead of other 15, 16-year-olds, and some 17-year-olds, which is why he was given that status. He was ready for the next step. They weren't saying he was going to be the next McDavid, they were saying, yeah, you're way better than all the other 15-year-olds, you can play in the QMJHL. And that's what he did. And so going into this year's draft, there is no question, a lot of people have already established that yes, Joe Valeno is a player who can take it to the next step immediately, as quickly as next season. And this is fantastic, because if we go by this statement, then we have ourselves four, possibly five guys who could make the NHL immediately after the draft. Of course, Dahlin, Svechikov, Zadina, the top three, add Valeno to that list, and maybe a Brady Kachuk as well, you got yourself a really good draft class, and the Vancouver Canucks will most likely have an opportunity to pick Valeno once they get their own pick. But the only thing is with Valeno, he's a two-way center, and his ceiling isn't necessarily that of an elite first-line 70-80 point guy. I could see Valeno probably maxing out at 60-65 points. So at the same time, would it be worth it for the Vancouver Canucks to choose Valeno a two-way center, a fantastic two-way center, by the way, even though they already have two-way center Bo Horvat in their system. Or would this be a situation where, like, oh, we could have Pedersen, Valeno, Horvat, and Goddett as our center core going in the future. That would be amazing. It really depends on where your values are and whether you value having a guaranteed NHL player who is definitely capable of staying in a top-six role or if you're looking for the next superstar with a bigger risk of that superstar not panning out to be a superstar. Because Joe Valeno is a guy who is a safe pick. Whichever team picks Joe Valeno, he will be able to make a good, significant impact going forward with that organization. Doesn't matter if that team needs centers or not. Any team that would draft Joe Valeno, they're getting a fantastic penalty killer, two-way forward, man with vision, skills, and overall fantastic playmaking ability. Joe Valeno is in a position where nobody knows where he's going to go. 
top three, and eh, maybe top four, um, okay, maybe in the top ten, some have him in the late teens, some people have him in the late twenties, it's incredible, the discrepancy here between Joe Valeno and his draft ranking. But one thing is for sure, Joe Valeno is going to be a player who plays in the NHL. That is hands down a truth. There is no way he is going to be a quote unquote bust. He wasn't granted exceptional status because he's an ex McDavid, but because he's already that far ahead. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Plus, news, Dr. Shrosik, Dr. Gaming, and bye. <laughs>